Okay, you're gonna do a, a two play here with using lots of peacock. Um, to be honest with you, I haven't even named this one. We haven't named it yet. I'm gonna start with a two inch stainless steel tube. I'm gonna use small diameter Scandinavian uh, tubing. And this is kind of a chartreuse color. We're just going to burn the end. Okay, burn the end, and we're going to put it onto our mandrel. I'm going to cut it with just about a quarter inch of the plastic out the front still. Okay, we'll put it onto our mandrel or pin, whatever you want to use. Okay, we're going to start by just uh, making a bead of fifth thread right before, or pardon me, right where the metal and plastic meet. Kind of wiggle them together to make sure we got a good hold there. You can see when, when you make that bead, the plastic or metal both won't twist now. I'm going to go back uh, maybe about a quarter inch on the metal tube. We're going to give this body a nice kind of blue look. The way we're going to do that is we're going to use flex tube, pardon me, uh, flexi film. Okay, and again, flexi film it has one side that has a sticky covering on it. So we're just going to take a maybe even less than one eighth inch strip, cut it with our scissors, or you could use an exacto knife too. Like I said in our last video too, we still haven't found our exacto knife, so scissors it is. Alright, just got a little thin strip here. And the key to working with flexi film is don't pull off the whole backing. What I do is I pull off maybe an inch, taper it. And now, even though it has a sticky backing, the flexi film, it will stick to the tube, especially if it's a nice stainless tube like this. Um, but you're still wrapping it pretty tight, uh, and it still works on the tension of the flexi film too, which has a little give. So you can see, as I wrap back, I'm going to slightly overlap. You'll notice I'll sometimes hold my tube just to give it extra support, because I'm wrapping pretty tight. And as I wrap, not sure if you can see this or not, but the backing comes off as I go. Now the reason that's important is if you just pull back your whole backing, I guarantee, well you probably like my setup down below here, I've got my waist back, or my waist catcher, and what happens if you pull off that whole backing, you're going to have you sticking to feathers and fur and whatever's down there. So just pull off a little bit of time, or if you do it right, it'll peel off itself as you go. Now you want to get a nice even, even overlap here. If it's not totally even, no big deal because you're going to go back over it again. But the flatter you get the first layer, the better the second layer is going to look. Okay, at this point I'm going to stop and switch directions. So now I'm wrapping forward, still overlapping. I've actually got a friend that has a nice rotary vise and he will put this on in a rotary style and just spin the whole the whole vise and let you know let the device do the spinning action for him. At this point I could pull the whole backing off. And I love using this flexi film on shiny metal tubes like this. Uh, especially stainless which is really shiny because that shine shows through flexi film kind of makes it glow a little bit I'm sure you've seen it on other videos okay and even though it sticks still gonna tie it off so you got the double insurance with flexi wrap of, of uh, putting it on with tension like we just did but also but also having it with that adhesive on it too. 
you can see it just gives a nice look to the fly gives that kind of almost segmented look and the shine as well all right okay you're gonna go ahead and uh, put in some gray hair in here that's been dyed chartreuse and I like the chartreuse because it goes along with the uh, goes along with the peacock that's going to be at the front of this fly. So, I need to find my hackle. <laughs> All right, here we go. So some chartreuse gray hackle. Sorry, that is gray hackle that's been dyed chartreuse, not to confuse anybody. I'm gonna pull back the fibers, pull back the fluff. And we're gonna tie it in by the tip. Now we're gonna wind this over seals fur. It's kind of a dark chartreuse seals fur I've got. Uh, I don't know if it's even chartreuse, maybe call it uh, Kelly Green almost. And again, you can use a doubling loop if you like. Um, I'm not too worried about it. I mean, I always, I always like to say I, put, I like to put seal on really loose, so it kind of has that space in behind it for the light to reflect. It's one of the main reasons for using seal in my books. Uh, when you use a doubling loop, it can get kind of, kind of compressed. All right, so just about a half inch of seal. We're gonna wrap, let me get rid of that tip there. Gonna wrap ahead with our chartreuse heron. And these heron fibers are really long, so you kind of have to pick it out as you go. Nothing worse than, than using a beautiful feather and then have it all matted down. I love this hair because when you first put it on, it looks like a bird's nest until you start combing everything back. So I'm just going to pull it back and I compress it with my fingers a little bit. It's starting to look a little better. Okay, at this point, I'm going to add one more, one more uh, chartreuse hair in. This time I'm going to use a feather that's a little bit smaller because I just want to build some bulk around the front. I don't want any more longer fibers. So a smaller chartreuse heron. Same thing, tied in by the, the uh, tip. I'm just going to wind it forward. Just gives a little more, uh, a little more bulk to the front of the fly, I guess you could say. Okay, same thing, going to pull it back. mess here. At this point I'm going to add a little bit of, this is actually uh, peacock barbs that we've dyed chartreuse, so I know peacock already has that nice green look. This just gives a little more green. And I'm going to add, this is going to be the underwing. I'm just going to add maybe six or seven barbs. I'm going to put it on top. Tie it down. Okay, at this point, we're going to add uh, a really vital part to this fly, and that is peacock. Here it is. 
and these peacock feathers. Um, these are the neck feathers, the green, pardon me, the blue neck feathers. And you can see they get a really beautiful look to them. So we're gonna add, the only problem with blue peacock neck feathers is they're very small. You can see, that's it. So I'm probably gonna add two, maybe even three. This is just kind of the final collar on the hackle. Again, tied in by the tips. You're gonna peel the fuzz away. So you can see you don't have a lot to tie there, especially on a tube. You'll be lucky if you get two turns out of it, not even. So there's one. Not even gonna pull it back, I'm gonna go right in with the second one. Pull the fluff. Tie it in by the tip as well. And I think I've said it before on videos, there's just absolutely nothing in the fly tying world that replaces the look of the purple and greens from Peacock. There's just nothing at all that replaces it. Okay, now I'm going to pull everything back. And if I'm happy with it, we'll leave it at that. If not, we'll go in with another one. And I mean, you don't want this to be the focal point of the fly. You just want it to give it a little kick of that green or blue. And that looks good. Hey, at this point, we're gonna go more peacock. So we use peacock curl here. We use uh, peacock neck feather. We use these are peacock swords. So we're gonna take and for a longer tube like this, we need a pretty big sword. So there's a pretty big one. A hey, peacock sword. And I'm sure everybody's used this before. Uh, it goes brilliant greens and blues only problem is it gets very short at the top so you need to get some of the back feathers here and this is going to be more under wing again just to give it that look and peacock it kind of curls up a little bit so you want to lay it flat so that that curl kind of comes down the wing okay, I'm going to add some more and again this isn't by any means the final wing this is just kind of an give a little bit of splash of peacock to the to the overall look of the wing. Okay, so again we just got some peacock there. Okay, at this point I'm just gonna add a little bit of of intruder grizzly hackle. Just gives it kind of a a uh, little bit of a lateral line. I have to admit, since we brought this stuff in, I, I added to a lot of the flies. Okay, so one on each side. Now we're going to bring this whole thing together by uh, adding a dark wing. And we're going to use Temple Dog. Use Arctic Fox too. Uh, we like the Temple Dog better because it's a lot softer. See, it's nice, nice flowing, soft fur. I'm gonna go pretty long wing here, so we're gonna cut a good sized chunk off, right, and we're going to pull it. Just get all the loose hairs out, and then pull it from the base too, getting the under fur off. I'm gonna get kind of size it up for the length, and I always say a good length is, you know, it's just slightly past the back of the tube. We'll trim it. Oh, just ran out of thread. Hang on, sorry about that. Just reattached a new uh, new thread. All right, so like I said, we're just pulling on the wing, slightly longer than the tube. I'm gonna trim it up. I'm gonna go on right on top with the with the wing. Now it's important you don't go too crazy with the wing. In fact, this wing's probably a little bit too thick. Uh, you can see, it's, you know, you leave a pretty big head there, but we're okay with that. A 
Actually, you know what? We're not okay with that. Way too much. Cut some of that back. There we go. Ah, it's much better. Add some jungle cock. I'm gonna go a little bigger this time. Oh, there it is. 